So you go to your airplane to pre-flight it for a flight that you have planned for the day and discover one of the instruments is not working properly on it. You ask yourself, can I still fly this airplane today based on the type of flying gun that I'm gonna be doing? But unfortunately, you can't remember from your flight training days what instruments or equipment is required on the airplane for the type of flying that you're gonna be doing. Hi, I'm Mark Donovan. I'm a CFI slash CFII and I've been doing flight instruction for about five years now. And I've successfully helped students get their private pilot certificates all the way up through students getting their CFI certificates. And what I'm gonna to do today is go over the required instruments and equipment uh, that are required for VFR day versus night flying, as well as for IFR flying. And so without further ado, we'll get right on into this and go over those topics. All right, we're gonna go over the required instruments and equipment for VFR and IFR flight. Um, those requirements stem from Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 91.205, which pertains to powered civil aircraft with standard category U.S. airworthiness certificates regarding the required instruments and equipment to be on board an aircraft for the specific types of operation it is to perform. For example, again, VFR day versus night flight or IFR flight. With the exception as provided in paragraph C, part three and E of 91.205, no person may operate a powered civil aircraft with a standard category U.S. airworthiness certificate in any operation described in paragraphs B through F of 91.205, unless that aircraft contains the instruments and equipment specified in those paragraphs or FAA approved equivalents, for that type of operation and those instruments and items of equipment are in operable condition. Um, if we go ahead and focus now a little bit on the VFR flight day, uh, we've got a few acronyms to think about here, A tomato, flames, and flaps. So for VFR flight day, um, flight day, we look at 91.205B and looking at the A tomato acronym, we need an airspeed indicator. We need a tachometer for each engine. We need an oil pressure gauge. We need a manifold pressure gauge if we um, are using, for example, um, an airplane with a constant speed prop, um, an altimeter, uh, a temperature gauge for each liquid-cooled engine, if liquid-cooled engines are on board your aircraft, and then finally, an oil temperature uh, gauge for each air-cooled engine. Uh, continuing on for VFR flight day, uh, using the FLAMES acronym, we have a fuel gauge that are required for each uh, tank, fuel tank. We need a landing gear position indicator if we have retractable gear. Uh, we have to have anti-collision lights, a magnetic compass, an emergency locating transponder, um, and safety belts. If we move on to the VFR flight night in performance, in addition to what we just saw for the day, we need to have, uh, using the FLAPS acronym, fuses if our aircraft requires fuses on board. We have to have spare fuses in case we uh, blow a fuse. Uh, we need a landing light and we need an anti-collision light system such as the beacon as you see there in that tail. Um, we need position lights, navigation lights, and finally we need a source of electricity such as an alternator or generator uh, with a battery. Now we'll transition over to the IFR flight uh, for um, instrument flying. It, this is under um, 91.205D. Um, there's two acronyms that can be used to help remember this uh, type of um, equipment or instruments. Uh, the first is DECRAT. So the D is for directional gyro. The E is for electrical source, again, an alternator, generator, battery. Uh, C uh, is clock with second hand displayed. K is Colesman, picture sen uh, Colesman pressure sensitive altimeter. Uh, R is for radios, comm radios, and navigation radios for the flight, required for the flight. Um, a is for attitude indicator. And lastly, T is the turn coordinator with inclinometer for rate of turn, roll rate, and quality of turn indicators. And then finally, we need, in addition to those um, equipment and instruments, all of the same VFR day and night requirements. Um, again, another way to look at this is using an acronym called grab card. It's just rearranging those um, instruments and equipment. Uh, to re relate to this uh, acronym grab card. So under grab card, G for generator or alternator with the, with the battery. Um, radio, you need comm and nav radios appropriate for the flight, the type of instrument approaches you plan on doing. Um, an attitude indicator, a ball inclinometer, a clock with a second hand display, an altimeter with a pressure sen that's pressure sensitive, a rate of turn indicator, and a directional gyro. And lastly, again, you need all the same 
BFR day and night requirements need to be met in addition to these IFR instruments and equipment. Now, there are sometimes exceptions um, that can be made for the type of equipment that's inoperable on the aircraft. Um, and one of the exceptions is if an operator decides to um, generate and request letter of authorization for a minimum equipment list. Um, this is defined under the advisory circular AC 91-67. So um, in operative instrument equipment, there's a specific uh, regulation, uh, Title 14 Code Federal Regulation 91.213. Uh, this addresses interoperative equipment and provides relief from 91.205 through the use of an FAA-approved minimum equipment list. It also provides a list of instruments and equipment that may not be included in an MEL. The ML, the MEL is a precise listing of equipment and operating procedures that authorizes an aircraft to be operated under specific conditions with interoperable equipment. For example, if there was a flight training aircraft that was only going to be used during day within a 50-mile uh, radius of the airport, um, an operator might request through its local FISDO um, to have this aircraft used with certain equipment in operating on it um, because it's only to be used for day flight within a certain radius of the airport. Um, the aircraft um, must receive a letter of authorization issued by the responsible FAA Flight Standards Office, like a FISDO, authorizing operation of the aircraft under the MEL. The letter of authorization and the MEL are not transferable as part of a sale of an aircraft to a new owner. The MEL is, is the specific inoperative equipment document for a particular make and model aircraft by serial number registration number, uh, such as in this example, nine, November 54321. The FAA approved MEL includes only those equipment items that the FAA finds may be inoperative while still maintaining an acceptable level of safety by appropriate conditions and limitations. The other um, type of instrument that can be used to determine if an aircraft uh, can be flown with inoperable equipment or instruments is something known as a kinds of operation equipment list, again defined under the uh, advisory circular AC 91-67. And again, it relates to um, the Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations 91.213, um, which really addresses getting relief from 91.205 on inoperative equipment or instruments. Again, the KOEL is a kinds of operating equipment list um, that is installed in the aircraft that specifies which kinds of operations a specific piece of equipment is required. Um, used as part of the process of determining if an aircraft with an operating equipment is airworthy. Typically, this is published by the aircraft manufacturer as part of the limitation section of the airplane flying manual or pilot operating handbook. So you go open the POH to look for a KOEL section, and in there you can determine if um, you can use an aircraft if a certain piece of equipment is inoperable. For example, KOL may state that a particular backup instrument equipment must be working to fly under day IFR or night IFR, but is not required for day VFR or night VFR. For example, a standard a standby battery may not be required to operate for day VFR flight um, as described in a KOEL. Uh, maintenance on interoperable equipment and instruments, it's also important to talk about this. There is the Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations 91.405-C. Um, each owner or operator of an aircraft shall have any inoperative instrument or item of equipment permitted to be inoperative by 91.213, Part D, slash 2 of this part, repaired, replaced, removed, or inspected at the next required inspection. And when listed discrepancies include inoperative equipment or instruments, shall ensure that a placard has been installed as required by 43.11 of this chapter. So to conclude on that, um, if you do have some inoperable piece of equipment uh, that's acceptable under 91.205 or 91.213 for some temporary relief, um, it's essential that it gets repaired or resolved um, at the next inspection, such as an annual inspection, 100-hour inspection. So there you have it. Those are the types of instruments and equipment that are required for uh, VFR day versus night flying and for uh, IFR flying. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button on it and subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments on this video, feel free to add those comments or questions down below at the bottom of this video.